Hey guys, how's it going? I just wanted to say welcome. Uh, let me just check my settings because I've got a bit of a delay going on here. Bear with me. I'm still a little bit new to this. So, guys, thank you for being here. We are live. Um, and yeah, I just wanted to quickly start by saying thank you to everybody that has sent me so much support following on from my interview with Lou Elizondo. I am blown away. Um, I had a great time. But let's move on. We're here today with James Ian Dolly from Engaging the Phenomenon. So I'm not going to waste any more time. I'm going to bring James in right now. Hello, sir. Hey, what's going on, Vinny? How you doing, man? I'm very well, man. A bit tired. I've had a uh, had a busy few days, man. It's uh, yeah, it's been a bit crazy. Yeah, I hear you, man. Kids wrapping up at school, and you know. Yeah, I've had two busy nights doing stuff in this uap world and then i've had kids in the day it's just crazy so yeah i get it man but hey it's all good so so just in case anybody watching this uh now or in the future doesn't know just give us a little uh, brief introduction and background to who you are what you do and things like that yeah sure um my name is james and i, I created the project or platform engaging the phenomenon I've been involved in uh, the UFO subject for quite a while, um, but more more so uh, was publicly involved since around 2009, uh, um, partially because of the, my work with CE5, because I had some uh, contact experiences early on, and I had already been doing UFO research and meditation, so um i i've kind of was always open to the subject and kind of everything that goes with the ufo subject um and uh, i actually created the first social networks for ce5 in 2009 wow. and at that point yeah um because there wasn't one right there was, yeah <laughs> back then uh, there was no place you can really go online and and talk ce5 with people um except the c-seti forum which was uh it, it you know it sucked <laughs> basically <laughs> it, it was just outdated you know it was outdated and it wasn't very active the, the few people that were on there would you know not it was always like the same like three people participating right, i see yeah, and, uh, yeah. you know it, it's just you know how it was and um so i created the, the first ce5 social network groups and um you know so we can talk with other uh, C5 people or people involved in contact work from around the country and the United States and, and the world. And uh, that really took off. And, uh, you know, we're able to uh, inform people and get people material so they can get started and start their own working groups and, and things like that. And, you know, nice. uh, so that was a journey within itself. Um, so <laughs> ever since then, I've, I've, I've been involved in both, uh, I guess, the UFO community and, and the CE5 community. Uh, they, uh, I guess you could say the communities are somewhat both have their own niches. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, yeah. For, yeah. And for, for me, it's always been one thing. So engaging the phenomenon is an inclusive approach, which includes, uh, you know, UFOs and ufology, nuts and bolts. Um, but it also yeah. includes the, the consciousness and the contact and high strangeness and um, kind of everything that goes with that. So. You know, that's how I ended up uh, here today, right with you. <laughs> nice, man. No, that's great. And I mean, you put out some amazing content across your uh, YouTube channels, so many different areas and stuff. And let's just, if it's okay with you, just talk about the CE5 a little bit more because, you know, I've seen the Greer stuff, the documentaries and that in the past. Um, but I am a very nuts and bolts researcher. And so I've, I've purposely made it my mission these last few weeks to try and speak to people or just look into that area of the subject a bit more because it is talked about a lot more these days and I don't want to be left behind. So where's a good place to start? I mean, other than the obvious with sort of Greer's documentaries, where would someone go next? Okay, well, you know, I want to first say, you know, CE5, uh, the terminology it has become a, a taboo within a tabooed subject, right? Oh, yes. Um, because... <laughs> And it's the elephant in the room. It's it's Dr. Stephen Greer, his personality and his affinity to burn every bridge he touches, you know, for better or worse. That, that's just his personality. Yeah. Um, and, you know, anybody that knows him closely will, will tell you the same thing. Just if you look at his team, uh, the, most of them have are always new people because uh, all the old ones left. Um, you know, and again, he ha has done an incredible job kind of 
spreading the awareness. You, ha- mm. you have this dichotomy, right? Because you have two sides of the spectrum where he has completely um, like put CE5 on the map, love it or yeah. hate it. Yeah. Uh, like people know, right? Uh, where, you know, 20, 30 years ago, you know, when he created the CE5 terminology, it was not really known. Um, there yeah, were people so. doing field work, but um, the, the most active group of people doing contact work um, was Mission Rama in the 1970s. And that was in Lima, Peru and South America. And, you know, they were doing a lot of contact work there, but the, the, um, the UFO community and, and ufologists weren't doing that kind of same work, especially yeah, to yeah. the extent they, they were uh, back in those days. And wasn't so, there some f- quite famous photographs from those days as well, back in the, in Lima, Peru? Yeah, yeah, they have. I mean, they have a lot of photographs. Some of them are uh, controversial. Some of them have been debunked. Right. Okay. But they, I mean, they certainly have some good footage, and um, you know, they they had local media in in the nineteen seventies and eighties and nineties um, come, you know. The, yeah. the idea was that the um, the media was invited, and they said, "Listen, on at this day, at this time, at this location, there's going to be a sighting because Mission Rama would do their version of contact." And again, which C five is um, it's just a term, right? It, you, yeah. you take a step back. The larger picture is contact. So you know, C five is just a simplified, uh, updated, rebranded term to kind of define a subsection of contact. Um, uh, but so, you know, again, they would have these what Ra- Mission Rama in the 1970s were, were called programmed sightings. Uh, so, you know, somebody in, in the group called the antenna usually uh, was like the designated info person. So like they would be the one receiving the information. They were like the intuitive, I guess you could say. Right. OK. Uh, and usually one group had one or two antennas. They were like highly sensitive people to contact. Um and and that's just how Rama ran. Some people don't like that because it's kind of you know like a hierarchy in a sense. So I understand that. Um, but you know they the the media would come or you know and and these people said you know the event's going to be at this time. And sure enough, you know there were sightings at like the day, time, and location. So wow. Um, so yeah, that is so. So I was going to say that is a bit different to what we've all heard as far as C five goes. So you've got. Mission Rama, is it? I keep saying the wrong name. Yes. Is it Mish- yeah, Mission Rama. You've got Rama. them. You've got the kind of Greer C5. Are there others as well? Is it? Does it keep going across different groups and yeah. years? Yeah, as far, as far back as you go into history, there's some form of person or group of people. You know, some would probably be categorized as cults, right? Yeah, um, yeah. But they're, they're doing some, some kind of methodology, some kind of ritual, some kind of practice, and they're having an interaction with non-human intelligence shamanism right right they go into different states they interact with other intelligences and they bring back information um you know uh and 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 some of the shamans they say you know they're 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 um sky people or their sky family you know so it's it's even pointing to like the et hypothesis in some ways yes um and again yeah you have john d who is doing enochian magic and and uh you know, he was the original 007 for the right, Queen. Yeah, that's where that, that came from. Yeah, yeah. He was he was doing some kind of thing. There was another gentleman um, in the early 1900s uh, named Nicholas Rorick, and okay. he was actually a, a Russian guy, and he was doing these kind of meditation Eastern practices and 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 claiming to have interactions. If you look at his paintings, he, I think one of the paintings has a UFO, and uh, you know, he wow. claimed to be in contact. So. Um, you know, really, C- CE5 is is like the new branded kind of version of whatever we can point to, um, which is, again, lo- in the bigger picture, is just contact. Yeah. You know, um, Dr. Alan Hynek and, and Jacques Vallée, even though, you know, dare not mention any Greer's name in front of any of these people. Really? Um, is it that bad now? Yeah. It, yeah, yes, yes, yes. And yes, we will yes. go into Greer a little bit after this, if you don't mind, because it is kind of, it, I think it does need covering a little bit. So, sure. But yeah, carry on sure. as you were. Yeah, no, that's cool. Yeah, so, but Heineck, you know, specifically had to make a category for this kind of activity, and he called it high strangeness. Yes. Because the the encounters of the UFOs were not just 
sightings. They, they weren't random sightings. There's uh, some of them had the telepathy, the psychic phenomenon. Uh, there were incidents with remote viewing. Um, there were an insane, and I've experienced a lot of this stuff myself, an insane level of, of synchronicities that just do not make any sense whatsoever. Other, I mean, it, it, it's just absurd. And, you know, Jacques Vallée has pointed to that. The, some of the absurdity of the things that, that go on during contact is just, you know, it, it, the intelligence somehow is is organizing in that way there's no other really good explanation for for things no. like that <laughs> that's awesome man seriously yeah. yeah i mean it's funny how it's all interlinked and connected isn't it and that's what really gets me and that's why i felt i needed to learn a bit more just to uh, to not be switched off to certain aspects of it but um, yeah and if, go on yeah and i was gonna say i was gonna say if you want to get into like a, a deep dive um because there's i mean there's so many directions you can go and for me, um, CE5, you know, and again, I, I almost, I almost want to use a new term now, just because yeah. it needs to be, it needs a reset, um, yes. unfortunately, and, and I think it, there's a better way to do it. Um, even though I think that Greer's original message, um, I, I, I think he had great, he had a great vision, and I think that you know things happened along the way, and you know people get lost sometimes. Yeah. Um, you know, but again, the original vision and, and kind of idea behind CE5, I think was great. But now it's, you know, it's, I think it's time to, to evolve, to evolve it now. Definitely. Um, I agree. And, you know, and again, it would not, not evolve under one person like me or whoever, but as the whole community, you know, it mm. has to be an organic growth where, um, you know, something new comes out of all this. Yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping to see something like that um it's needed as well it, it feels like we are just about to change again with this uaptf report whether it comes whether it doesn't whatever happens beyond that is still going to keep going up i think contact I, I will try not to call it ce5 as much it needs to evolve <laughs> alongside this this freight train that we're riding at the moment so yeah completely agree man yeah in the same way that ufology needs to you know it's like yeah. you know people say the old guard the new guard you know, it's kind of like, yeah, they bo everything. The whole thing needs to just be reborn. Yeah. You know, it's like a new day and age, really. And I, I don't mean that in like the age of Aquarius kind of way, even though some people talk about that. But <laughs> yeah. seriously, you know, it's the 21st century. We need and, you know, things are changing so fast and we got to we got to adapt to those changes yeah. and uh, and and kind of revise everything uh, based on new information. And uh, oh, but getting to the consciousness uh, thing, just if you want to take a deep dive into that, I have a friend named Exo Academian, and he runs an uh, one of the coolest podcasts on um, UFOs and consciousness called The Point of Convergence. Wow! Uh, so okay. I, would, I would say definitely check out his stuff because um, he he goes into everything from consciousness, psychic phenomena, near death experiences, uh, contact, and kind of everything that. And again, it's. He calls it the point of convergence because he's, you know you have all these different things, UFOs and the psychic phenomena, near death experiences, and and they all kind of meet at this point, right? Which, um, you know, which is consciousness, you know, yeah. for uh, you know, and I know some people are still maybe a little, um, you know, deterred by that terminology, but I think most people kind of like, especially in our generation. Uh, like they get it, you know, it's not absolutely like, it's there's, there's yeah. a lot of curiosity there and to be just to say Carry on on that point. I actually do follow X exo academia on Twitter But I've not looked into his podcast yet. So I definitely will go and check that out. So I appreciate the uh, the recommendation. So yeah so um, yeah. Let's jump on to Greer because I just want to get it out because something that I found is I've been a fan of Greer for a long time going back and then over these last what three four years seeing everything that's going on and the word behind the scenes that he really kind of is frowned upon a bit these days um i think you're probably in a better position to talk about what happened than, than i am so i'd love to hear your point of view man yeah um and it's because i always every time i go live on instagram and stuff some of the first comments every time are greer greer talk about greer and i I've, I've had a little bit of enough of trying to explain it. So I'd rather somebody with a bit more knowledge gives it a go. 
<laughs> yeah, I mean, I, honestly, I don't, I, I don't think people really want to know because if, if people knew everything, I think they would be very upset. Uh, and I, I'm saying that completely honestly. And as somebody who had um, tremendous respect for Dr. Greer over the years, there's just a lot that people don't know um, um, that would probably change their minds. I mean, and I get it. You know, he, you know, he had had kind of spearheaded a, an entire effort. Yeah. And um, it's it changed everything. It really did. I don't know if there would have been a to the stars academy um, without um, the disclosure project, you yeah. know, and so much has happened back starting in the 90s. That is, you know, we're just seeing the fruits of all that now, yeah. you know, in the past few years. Again, this is a momentum building that became a waterfall that freaking just broke everything. And uh, it's because of those, because you know um, John Podesta. We see him in the in the media now. You know, Indeed. he yeah. was, yeah. So he, you know, he got involved when the Clintons did, and and Lawrence Rockefeller because of Dr. Greer's work back then called you know Project Starlight, which became the Disclosure Project. Sure. Um. So, I mean, you know, what do you do with this, right? It's like he he's done some incredible work, but even even back then, like. If you go look back at some of the old Disclosure Project witness testimony videos, yeah, like you can hear and listen. Sometimes you see her hair, but Leslie Keen was involved with that, and she won't she won't mention it. She won't talk about it. And wow. uh, you know, I hope she's she's not upset that I say this. Um, but you know, she she did some of those interviews, and uh, James Fox was involved a little back then, and um, it, and uh, Ed Mitchell, of course, we know that he was involved, and um, he burned he burned them. You know, um, I think like they were supposed to be and, and I, you know, don't quote me on this part, but from what I understand, like Leslie Keen and some of the and, and Ed Mitchell were supposed to be part of that 2001 event. Right. And they and they kind of got put by the side and it was kind of placed as like all oh, Greer. And I, they, I think they got really upset with that. And, um, you know, if you look at Leslie Keen's book, yeah. um, which is is one of the best books on UFOs ever written. Um the UFOs generals go on the record. Those are all disclosure project witnesses. And right. she knew all of them. She knew all of them from that time. Um, she, wow. was, I, I believe she was at the press club event and her, um, Dr. Greer's top military advisor, commander, Will Miller, um, you know, she, commander, Will Miller was one of Leslie Keene's sources for a lot of stuff. Wow. You know, so it's crazy. Yeah. You know, Miller was in like legitimate programs, not not so much UFO programs. He was a high ranking Navy guy. Right. Um, he was a naval commander and he he saw a lot of stuff and he knew how the system worked. He helped get the Wilson meeting. Um, wow. You know, and that and that was a few years in the making. I found a document that I actually released with um, Juliana Morinkovic where um, there was a correspondence between um, Will Miller and uh, Tom and Tom Wilson trying to get this interview or this this briefing with Dr. Greer starting in '95. So that was you know two years in the making before yeah. they had it in 1997. Sure. Um, but I'm actually going to have an interview um, with a good friend of mine, and his name is Dr. Joseph Burks, and he was on the CSETI board of directors from 1992 to 1998, and he mm. he, he saw he saw how. You know, he was there for the early days of CSETI with Dr. Greer, and he saw a lot of things that were going wrong. And, you know, he had to leave in 1998 because he was so disgusted and hurt at, um, you know, what he had experienced with CSETI wow. uh, and Dr. Greer um, that he had to leave. And, you know, this is another medical doctor. He's an MD. He was another emergency room doctor. And, um you know, in that in that interview, we're going to talk about some of those early days and some of the things that went wrong wow. and how things got off course. Because it's important for the historical record of, you know, of this. It is. How, it is. And that's kind how, of why I wanted yeah. you to. Sorry. Sorry to interrupt. This is why I needed to hear it really from you, because I knew you were the man to ask. And as much as people tell me not to waste my breath on career and stuff like that, I'm sorry, but it is. It needs to be laid out there, you know, once and for all for the record. So, yeah. Sorry to interrupt, man. Yeah. And again, he again, he's done tremendous work and I, I hate to see where it's come to where, you know, he's now name calling people like Lou Elizondo. He's never spoken to Lou, Lou Elizondo. 
and he's you know he's saying he's this the dis master spy master disinformation agent and all this kind of stuff it's like dude you <laughs> never spoke to the man you know um if if he was you know, if he came to Greer and said, hey, listen, Dr. Greer, I want to help you, I'm sure it'd be a completely different story. But, you know, that's not what happened. And um, it's, it, you know, it shouldn't be that way. 